Hey, what's up, guys? It's Keith Allen. The Australian Open kicked off last weekend, and just in case you missed it, we caught the best moments of the event. I hope you guys enjoy our commentary because you can now use all of Pro Guides for free. Check out the best guides and tips available to improve your game fast. Jalen is a player that caught Tifu's eye early, so I was really excited to watch him play. Unfortunately, he wasn't featured very often. Watching just this fight, I can already see a lot of great qualities, great builds and instincts being shown here by both players. That was a great fight. Jumping ahead to the mid game, you can already tell that Oceanic players love to fight. There are only 55 players left. NA and EU would have around 70 players at this point. The circle is near paradise as well. Natural terrain is gonna make or break the game for everyone. So let's skip ahead and let's see what happens. There's this passive play that we're used to. <laughs> the amount of action that happens is dictated by the zone moving, but the zone didn't move very far. In fact, it spawned on a majority of the players. Chief's Parpy is in a pretty good spot. His high ground looks very reinforced, and I'm curious to see if he can capitalize and win the game from here. Seeing only a few planes up there is refreshing because NA and EU games have like 10 to 15 planes up there at times. I can't wait until they're all gone. Now this is the storm that's gonna kill everyone. We also get another check in with Jalen. I wish he threw the dynamite with more thought, but it's a high pressure situation, so it's fine. Not the cleanest 50-50 win, but he still comes out on top. Imagine being low on mats in this situation. You'd be done for. Zones that force you to go over mountains are killer in pro play. Now look how brutal this rotation is. I almost feel bad. They have to move down the mountain they just climbed. Players are dry on mats. You can definitely expect players to start dying. High ground in his end as well. Minkin's gonna pick up an elimination as well. Fights are ensuing. It's gonna be a nice shot on Hershigles of Renegades, but no, he is gonna get taken out there by Shy, Shy, Shy. Hershigles gets cleaned up as well. On board with Zenith, looking for high ground to his name. Back. To this game is definitely coming down to a heel off. Sitting on one HP, Jordy Twins. Not kidding. Up. Only in the, uh, a few players oh, left, no. and this is the final one. circle. It. He's gonna have to sneak in here, and that might be all she wrote. Jalen going down with six elims, should still feel good about that. Oh, who, look, at, look who's still alive here. It's gonna be the X2 twin, that's Jesse, who qualified, going for the heel off. We know how well he plays in the late game, a more passive player, very smart, very consistent player, and it looks like one of the X2 twins is looking to win this first game. Chances are Minkin's gonna go down with the, the uh, storm here in a second. Snake just throwing it all the way down that redeploy, maybe. Could not land it. And it's going to be twins, Jesse. Twins at home. Can you believe it? Game five number HP. one. With five HP to his name, it is Jesse, the X2 twin himself, representing for the brothers here and a nice cheeky dance. This game felt like a fall skirmish game. I mean, they're clearly behind in skill level. Some players looked obviously way more dominant, but it's just game one, and maybe the nerves got the better of them. Let's move on to game two and see if there are any differences. X2 Twins is hiding. This is how he won the first game with the zero kill heal off. But hey, it's a viable strat to win the game. It's a BR after all. That edit, unedit trick is great for passive players. It makes your wall weak, but you can see through it again. He's still there after two minutes. <laughs> what a champ. Now we're gonna see him play at IEM Katowice. So I hope he can change up his style against the best players in the world. These are some very aggressive plays. It's much different than how NA and EU play. It probably comes down to an experience, but at least they aren't scared. Tilted towers in games are pretty rare. A lot of tall reinforced buildings and mountains nearby. If the circle moves out of tilted, then players are gonna drop like flies. A bunch of players rotating through tilted and over a mountain is a nightmare. Ouch, that storm is brutal. We're gonna see a bunch of materials being burned and an uncomfortable amount of tunnels. 35 people are alive right now, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a lot less very soon. Look at that, 18 players down, and on the bottom left of my screen, I see the zero kill legend again, sitting pretty at full health and shield. He's in a great position to win the game again. He has uncontested mid ground and still about 800 metal left. Mid-ground play is tricky in high-level lobbies. It's really easy to get sandwiched and he's also not reinforcing at all. One deagle shot and he's gone. That's the danger of mid-ground. Not Neighbor's position isn't that great even though he has high ground. Everyone is turtling up, he can't even capitalize and once the storm moves, he can easily be shot out. 
It's the RNG Scramble now. Your goal is not to run into anyone. And if you do, then you better hope that you get the first shot. Look at his loadout. You already know what his game plan is. He's probably gonna win unless someone goes in on him. It's gonna be hard though. I mean, look at his mats. This is why metal is so important in the late game. That D shot would have broken wood and sent him straight into a pump shot. Now you know why pros farm brick and metal all the time. This game is going down to another heal off. I do respect that Gosu Keith is going in for the kill. Love it or hate it, X2 Twins has a game plan and he executed it. He wins again with another zero kill heal off. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda disappointed in how late games have ended. I mean, everyone looks forward to intense turtle wars and watching the treacherous journey of the eventual winner. But I mean, I, I get it. Wins like these happens and this playstyle works. I'm gonna do us a huge favor and skip to the end game. Here's the two time winner again with the loadout that fits his playstyle. Now, normally, players hold into the rift and possibly sneak into the safe zone. But this way, X2 Twins ensures that he saves all of his mats. And as we've seen in the first two games, mats are his lifeblood. Look at that, he's rewarded with his play. He has just under 2k mats and he probably hasn't even shot a bullet yet. We've also seen him continually favor mid ground. You know, at this point, he's probably doing this on purpose. Most players actually avoid it because it costs way more mats to maintain. He knows this and he plays around it from the second he lands. I'm liking this guy's position. He gets to plow away at everyone and has a rocket launcher for good measure. This is the type of high ground you want. Gancho smile with the big boy play at 11 health. See, this is why in-game Fortnite is fun to watch. This guy's an animal. Making a deagle play with 11 health? I want this guy to win. He deserves it. Back to the heal off champion. This is the first time we've seen him pressured and he's actually low on mats. A good thing about his positioning is that he isn't very high off the ground, so fall damage isn't an issue. MF Vince is still on the high ground. What a beast. And there are three other players that are bound to fight. There he is. X2 Twins claims his first kill. MF Vince should easily, I mean easily have this win. I see a safety net below him. He has two med kits and a campfire running. For good measure, he still has some mess left. MF Vince does the unthinkable and moves away from his campfire and stops medkitting. I'm gonna give him a break here. I mean, it's a high ground pressure situation, but he threw the game. If you can complete a medkit during a hill off, you should just do it. He might have went for the kill just to score an extra point, but man, that one must have stunk. X2 Twins wins on another storm elimination. This guy is an animal. The game came down to another storm elimination. I'm still getting very strong fall skirmish vibes. Players are dropping like flies once the circle starts moving, which is a good and bad thing depending on how you look at it. Hey, on one hand, there's more of a chance for action, and on the other, it could be players mismanaging the storm. Let's hop into game four and see if anything's going to change. It's only right that we start with this clip. The three-time winner gets pushed and deleted. The player count looks reasonable here, but look at this clutter of players. It's kind of crazy, and this game looks more like a FNPL game than a pro game. Players are probably looking for those sweet elimination points. I'd actually love if NA and EU games turned out like this. We would see our favorite players actually build battle each other. Sort themselves out as opposed to getting really involved there. There's that slight drop, looks like the structure underneath, and a build fight engaging here. Keith trying to push up, see if he can take high ground back, but he says no thank you. He's gonna back all the way back down, halfway down the structure and build himself in a one by one. He's kind of waiting for the explosion. Oh, he can wall himself off more. Oh dear. Fall damage hitting there, 67 left. Two full shields and five bandages might be enough to pick himself back up just in time for a push from Zarbi. What like you want to be doing, jumping over onto the other side of the map, Slayer and Herschel's having a bit of a go at each other now. We've already seen Slayer pick up one or two eliminations in this match so far. Looking for that third, looking for that point. It'll be the first, I believe. No, it's the second one. Donger sitting on three eliminations of his own. He picked up his first point of this game already. Player looks at it too as Ooh, Slayer goes absolutely down. Absolutely quick. Beamed. The fighting and late rotations are starting to make sense. Players that landed on the east side of the map are playing a running simulator and they all enter the second zone at the same time. When you're right next to a dude, you're probably gonna shoot. Look at the next zone. 
The players on the south side of the zone might be close to the zone, but the player density there is pretty bad. Now, once they get in, they're going to have to fight moving zones right after. I know I've talked about the zone a lot, and there's a reason for it. Let's jump ahead to the end game. See that next safe zone? Whenever a safe zone requires the entire lobby to push up a mountain, like in game one, you can expect a lot of deaths. If you have no mats, then better luck next time. This player is in great shape and even has five kills, but we didn't really get to watch any. Epic Spectator Client is still a work in progress. This storm is so rough. Dude is still in a plane. I respect that. This guy is on ultimate high ground, and you can tell right away that he wants to heal off. Glider redeploy makes this strategy somewhat viable, but he's still too high for no good reason. This is what happens when no one has mats, and as is tradition, the last one in wins the fight. Let's look at positioning again. Dolph is in the best spot right now, despite being a low ground. He just picked up mats, heals, and no one is near. Now, soon enough, people will understand that low ground isn't always a bad thing. Good shot, sir. What is this guy doing? He could have easily just ran out and fought. He has nearly full shields and plenty of time to save himself from the storm. Instead, he's BMing. I'm upset Dolph didn't get the kill here, but man, that's a play DS contest will look back and shake his head. This is great awareness from Dolph. To know that Kojo's in the sky, I love how he's calm enough to shoot at the right spot as well. Yep, you see that? Kojo was too high and couldn't execute the glider redeploy at the perfect time. Great win by Dolph. Hopefully, we can get to see more of him in the future. It's pretty clear to me that these players are more than fine mechanically. Their meta is completely different though. Early game hot drops are a clear strategy for Oceanic players and we're seeing upwards of 30 players drop before the third storm. I'm all in for different metas in different regions, but I'm not too sure if this one works with the current point system. Now overall though, the pacing is much more viewer friendly, but I love to see higher level of mechanics. So let's move on to game five. I've been meaning to mention this throughout the video, but man, the UI bugs are terrible. It's kind of crazy how Epic gets a pass on errors like this. The loadouts, shields, and player count needs to be there, or else watching becomes a chore. Anyways, there isn't much happening in this game, so let's just go ahead. Look at the player count. 60 players left, and the second storm is just starting to close in. This zone is way more forgiving than the last one. There should be plenty of players in the last few storms. Check out a few of these awesome plays. It really goes to show that this zone seems pretty forgiving. A lot of fights could happen here. Let's enjoy these fights. You can bet your bottom dollar that everyone else is going to get involved as well. Everyone wants to pick up that elimination. The stink bomb as well, forcing him out of position. This is not good for Phil at all. Phil is under a lot of fire. Phil has actually been eliminated. Three players with sights on you and you're so incredibly low. No cover to be found. He will get eliminated. Papi now, he's reinforcing this area, spotting that there's going to be other threats that we need to contend with. There's going to be 24 seconds until the storm shrinks. Yeah. You might ideally want to be maybe 500 or so more, but at the end of the day, it's not terrible for him. His Problem is, is a bit terrible though. he is in a very precarious position in terms of the map geography down below Polar Peak. Lots of players around him, lots of players looking at him. He's really in the middle of nowhere. There's a lot of players going to be taking some shots at him and putting him under pressure, so it's not an easy rotation in here for him. It's up towards Viking, perhaps. Then everyone's going to have to start building up Poppy that hill. Poppy and Taylor. Taylor is actually taken out now by Poppy. You can see for Skylight, it's very, very hard if you don't have that sniper rifle assisting you, the drop-off range from this mm. weapon. Not really assisting him as he's trying to take these shots, but Boys is here to join the party, and Boys is knocking on Skylar's door. He doesn't have the building, the, the ability to break those buildings. He doesn't have a Deagle, he doesn't have an SMG, anything like that. The shotgun, not really going to be so great, nor is the, the heavy rifle. So I think he might need to just disengage that close-range fight. There he is, X2 Twins, in his natural habitat. It's going to be interesting because he's so close to everyone else and is stuck on low ground. Kojo's is again on high ground and looking ready for a late game push. It's the same group of players in every late game. The skill gap is huge. Oh my gosh, that's tragic. Look at the top left of your screen. Chief's Parpy lashed into a zip line then jumped off. <laughs> my condolences. I really like how Kojo's is playing. His playstyle would fit right in with the NA and EU meta. Smart play to push close enough and begin pressuring. Even though he drops, he easily picks himself up there. 
Mr. Fresh Asian taking out Kojo's is a nice 50-50 fight, and then he gets a free launchpad play. Very nice stuff. Wow, another launchpad. He doesn't have redeploy, so being here is a bit scary. Naper picking up a kill and then using glider redeploy. This is actually shaping up to be an exciting game to watch. Yeah, this guy is dead. No mats? No, oh, nothing to get down safely. This is the real last fight here. Ouch. Getting hit like that sucks. Wow, that's a choke. I feel really bad because a lot of people are going to make fun of him, but that's a very stressful situation. Hats off to not Naper still though. Five kills? <laughs> Second place in a good game. That's not bad. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I was a lot more entertained this game than with the other game. There are some clear advantages to having a late game with only 40 people. I'm also starting to see the same trend of players make it to the late game, and that's a good thing. Game 5 has me pretty excited for the last game. I'm expecting a lot of players to be aggressive in this game. I mean, it's the last chance for points, so it's common to see players go hyper aggressive. These house gridlocks are the worst. No one really wants to make the move. I like this launch pad play. It feels like a waste, but it's all about living to fight another day. This was one of my favorite fights in the entire event. Jalen tries to break the box and attempts the roof face trick. Spoling with a great move to slip out. Wow, now that's an insane wall phasing trick. I know about the floor edit one, but this cone phase is way better. I'll definitely have this in a video for you guys in the future. That shot was so good by Spoling. <laughs> R.I.P. Jalen. That was a great fight though. And P.S. Rocket launchers are OP. This safe zone is pretty interesting. Now, there's a lot of flat ground, which means players are going to burn through mats. The north side is also very dense with players. Rotating through a divot is going to be terrible. Planes are a lot of fun. X2 Twins is setting up for another top 10 placement. He has a ton of mats as well. I'm seeing a lot of the same names in the late game, again. Point chasing is probably going to be crazy in the last few minutes, so it should be pretty exciting. X2 Twins with another extremely fast rotation ahead of the pack. He's still on that mid-ground too. I mean, look at him. He's just tunneling. He has no intention to fight just yet. Jordy getting taken down. Kieran also falling. But Araki, the one I think that we need to keep an eye on. Araki and Jesse, it's the race to the finish. It's the race right now to the 100K. And it all comes down to this. Araki trying to put his... Put Pretty lucky break for Gosu Keith there. Smart play all around by Jax. Playing the angles on low ground is a trademark of a good player. Jax must be really nervous right now because I know he probably would have hit those normally. He got this point, so, you know, that's what matters. Great game by him. X2 Twins is on his mid-ground, but he has no mass now. He has to fight, and it's crazy to think that we haven't seen a three-time winner full-on fight yet. Oh, there it is. One kill with his AR and a clean edit play right after. He's clearly a very skilled player, you know, and it frustrates me as a viewer that he isn't making plays. Let's roll the rest of the game and see how it plays out. This is going Jordan. down to the wire. It might come down to an Iraqi versus Jesse finish here. That's a possibility. Six players left. It all comes down to this. Jesse, the X-Twin. All eyes on him. He's got no mats. Poppy's down now, but X2 Twins, they're on the ground. This is not the situation Jesse likes to be in. He's going to put some shots in on the mid-ground, but not many bandages to his name. Jesse with five people left needs to try Where's to Iraqi? stay alive. I think he has the cover to stay alive here. Here comes the heel off. Iraqi still high ground with the med kit as well. Oh, I don't know about this one for Jesse. He only has the bandages. Iraqi, another elimination for him. That's six, two points. Another one actually only, oh! This was a fun game to watch. There were some outplays, some aggressive plays, and just overall kept me entertained. The quality of play definitely went up as players got more comfortable. The OCE region is clearly behind in terms of skill, but this event makes me optimistic for the World Cup coming soon. Hey guys, once again, it's Keith Allen, and I hope you guys enjoy my commentary of the Australian Open. Now, for more Fortnite commentary, hey, check out Pro Guides and register for free. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. And leave us a comment down below about which pro players you want us to talk about next. Hey, and I would love to hear from you if you guys want to connect with me personally on my Instagram. All right, stay tuned for more videos coming soon.